So in this clip we're going to talk about ARP properties, or properties of autoregressive processes of order up to P. We know that we can derive an AR1 process from an MA infinity and we're going to state that MA infinity process here remembering that theta naught is equal to 1. And we could also derive the properties of the AR1 from this MA infinity and we're going to do this for AR2 and ARP. So here's a table and we start out stating the restrictions required to move from an MA infinity to starting with an AR1 process. That was theta s was equal to phi 1 times theta s minus 1. So the theta coefficients of subsequent periods were related to each other and that delivered the following AR1 process. Now for AR2 that restriction on the MA infinity coefficients has to be theta s is equal to phi 1 times theta s minus 1 plus phi 2 times theta s minus 2. And that restriction will deliver an AR2 process. And you can possibly already guess what the required restriction on the MA infinity parameters for an ARP process is going to be. We're going to relate theta s to theta s minus 1 up to theta s minus p and that will deliver that ARP process. There's actually an epsilon t missing at the very end. You need to add that. So with these processes what were the expected values of yt? It turned out for the AR1 it was alpha divided by 1 minus phi 1. For AR2 it's going to be alpha divided by 1 minus phi 1 minus phi 2 and for ARP alpha divided by 1 minus the sum of all phi coefficients. So alpha divided by 1 minus the sum of all phi i going from s equals to 1 to p. Okay, we are adding up all ar coefficients. We are subtracting that. That was the expected value for yt. So we're not going to derive this ARP and AR2 once here, but you can do it in the same way as we did for the AR1. Now the variance for the AR1 process turned out to be that, and the variances for the AR2 and ARP processes are going to be very, very similar. Okay, so let's just look at the ARP process. The variance is going to be sigma squared, that's the residual variance divided by 1 minus the sum of the square of all AR coefficients phi s s 1 to p. So that's the variance. So we can see from these results that the AR1 and the AR2 are really special cases of the ARP process. Okay, so AR1 and AR2 are special cases of the ARP. So we'll look at the stationarity and we'll only look at the um, ARP process. And there's also a special clip for details here. So here's our ARP process with P lags, yt explained by P lags of y. And for the stationarity we realized it was uh, best to write it down in this lag operator notation and then it turned out that yt was stationary if that polynomial which we derive from the lag polynomial up there but replacing the lag operators with the slamters but with powers which were in the reverse order to the else. Again look at the special clip on uh, AR stationarity. So that polynomial we would set equal to zero, that's what we call the characteristic equation and if that equation delivered solutions, or sometimes called roots, solutions for lambda that were an absolute value smaller than 1 for all p solutions, so that i will go from 1 to p, if all these solutions were an absolute value smaller than 1 then we had a stationary process. So <coughs> Let's continue with the properties. We'll go back to our table with AR1, AR2 and ARP. We'll look at the covariances for AR1, AR2 and ARP. So the covariance between yt and yt minus j and we call that uh, gamma j as a short form. And we figured out for that for the AR1 process the, the gamma 
j was related to the gamma j minus 1 by this form gamma j equals phi 1 times gamma j minus 1 for all j larger and equal than 1 for the ar2 that's going to look very similar uh, for all j larger than 2 and therefore for the arp we get a very very similar result and gamma j is a function of gamma j minus 1 all the way up to gamma j minus p and linearly related using the AR coefficients phi 1 to phi p. That's for all j over p. So again AR1 and AR2 are just a special case of the ARP. Now if yt is stationary then we can divide these covariances by the variance which we'll also call gamma naught and what we'll obtain are the relevant relationships between the autocorrelations rather than the covariances. So let's do that on this occasion. So we'll do that for the um, ARP process. So we'll basically first just copy the equation we saw on the table here for the covariances of the ARP but each term we divide by gamma naught which is now the variance but we do that on both sides of the equation so we are not really changing anything and then we need to recognize that the covariance so gamma j divided by gamma naught is nothing else but the autocorrelation of the chafed order and we'll label these with rho okay autocorrelations will be labeled with rho so here we have rho j is equal to phi 1 times rho j minus 1 plus phi 2 rho j minus 2 all the way up to phi p times rho j minus p. So the, the let's say fifth order autocorrelation is related to previous order to the fourth order, third order and so forth all the way p lags back.